Hi hey folks, it's been a long time since I last did a review of any products and funnily enough pretty much the last thing I reviewed I think was a set of paintbrushes and that was a while ago. Um, so I've been using those paintbrushes which was the Army Painter Master Set of paintbrushes and I've been using it for about two years. I don't paint a lot uh, so that's a long life for a set of paintbrushes but I have come to accept the fact that they are mostly dead. Um, now the review for that you can see there probably and the dry brushes from that set are fine you know dry brushes are dry brushes uh, the tank brush has lost its point but it's fine tank brushes don't need a point the rest of the brushes yeah they have definitely seen out their useful life so I thought it was time to buy some new paint brushes and I had a good look around and I've decided to do a review today of the brushes that I've ordered. Um, but I thought it'd be worth doing a little preamble telling you a little bit about paintbrushes. And this may seem strange to you if you're a miniatures painter. Some of you may know this really well, but I have not needed to know any of this stuff uh, for the 35, gosh, yeah, 37, eight years that I've been painting miniatures. I've never needed to know more than the difference between a size two and a size double zero. You know, that's been the extent that I needed to understand. But I have discovered that these things do make a difference when you reach a certain level in painting. Now I am, I'm a good painter. I'm not a, a outstanding painter, but I am a good painter. I win prizes at small events, um, but I'm not going to bring home a golden demon or a crystal brush or whatever they have out there. Um, but I'm good and I'd like to be better. And one of the things I've discovered is that one of the ways that one becomes better is by knowing more about your tools that helps you to pick the right tool for the right job at any given time. And so I decided to go out and learn a little bit more about brushes and I found a set that I think is going to help me do that. So before we go into the, the unboxing itself and have a look at what I've bought, I just sort of wanted to take you through some of the features of paintbrushes that you may start to come across. If you've reached the place in your painting journey where you have found that you need to take the next step to get any better, that you need to start expanding your understanding of the the technical side of miniatures painting, not just the, the raw how to put paint on a miniature side of things. Um, there are a few things that we need to know to be able to choose the brushes that are right for us. Now once upon a time it was simple, you wanted a sable brush. Uh, every miniatures painter wanted a sable brush and that was the way it was. The place to go for sable brushes has for years been Windsor and Newton and miniatures painters all over the world swear by the Windsor and Newton series 7 set. Now that's a watercolours paintbrush set and of course we paint our miniatures mostly with acrylics and these days increasingly with oils. But regardless uh, the sable brush has consistently been the choice of the miniatures painter uh, because it's the flow of the paint that we're looking for. Canvas artists using acrylic paints tend to use them uh, in greater quantities with thicker applications, which is why the watercolour brush, which of course is a, a naturally very thin paint, uh, actually suits our needs better because we tend to apply paint uh, in thin coats and in small quantities. But in recent decades, people have become more and more interested in synthetic brushes. And not only that, but there is a range of other materials available that it's worth knowing about. So sable is the basic, and of course, if you've been painting for a while, you'll be aware that there is a sort of a Rolls-Royce version of sable called Kalinsky sable, which is uh, from a, a particular variety of sable. If you didn't know, by the way, a sable is an animal. It is a little bit like a mink or a, 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 a pine martin or a mongoose. It's in that same kind of family. And the hairs for our paintbrushes come from the tips of the tails of these animals. And the Kalinsky sable is a particular variety of sable that is said to give the very 
finest quality of hair. Uh, they are almost all bred in captivity for this purpose, predominantly in Russia uh, and the former Soviet Union. Um, and, you know, it's, it's not a trade without cruelty because these animals are really only bred for the purposes of harvesting their hair. So for those of us that are interested in these things, you know, there, there is definitely a question to be asked as to whether we are comfortable supporting it. But um, Kolinsky sables and sables are not the only animals to be harvested for paintbrush hair. Uh, squirrels, grey squirrels, uh, I believe, are also harvested. Uh, they are bred and harvested for paintbrush hair. Um, as are a number of other animals that provide a range of hairs that are called bristle. I don't know a lot about bristle because we don't use bristle in miniatures painting, um, but, but there is some market for squirrel hair as well as sable and Kalinsky sable. So when we're thinking about the world around us and if we've got an ethical position on the use of animals for purposes like this if if you're perhaps vegan or or just a, a, of an ethical mindset you're going to be interested in looking at synthetic brushes now synthetic brushes for a long time were a, a very very long way down the list of choices for artists but in recent years particularly in response to the growth of the animal welfare movement and the growth of veganism um, synthetic brushes have vastly improved in quality to the point that they are now competing certainly <clears throat> certainly with bog standard sable and even knocking at the door of Kalinsky sable. But they all have different physical properties. Even the synthetic uh, bristle cannot uh, fully repli replicate the physical properties of organic brush hair. One of those properties is a quality referred to as snap. Now, generally speaking, there are, there are different takes on what is meant by snap, but it comes down to one real fundamental thing, which is the ease with which a brush returns to the original shape it possessed. So it's referred to as snap in the context of when you're making the draw with the brush, when you remove the brush from the painting surface, that the head returns to its aligned position. But it also applies to the question of whether a head deforms easily. So if it's used in a particular way a lot, will it settle into a deformed position? Generally speaking, the better the snap of a brush, so the quicker it returns to the center line when you're actually drawing a line on the surface, also means the more prone it is to long-term deformation. But, by and large, snap is a quality that you want your brushes to have because snap refers to the degree of control you get over the fine motor application of the brush to the surface. So as miniatures painters, snap is an important quality. And snap is one of those qualities that has made Kalinsky Sable the preeminent choice of bristle for decades. Um, because it has by far the superior snap. So we're going to take a look at how well the synthetic brushes stand up to that question in due course. Now the other features of a brush that uh, people need to be aware of if you're in at the place of making that transition to the next level in painting uh, is going to be shape. So there are umpteen shapes of paintbrush. If you go onto the website of a company like Winsor & Newton, then you're gonna see all kinds of different shapes and designs of brush. Only two matter to miniatures painters, and that is round brushes and square brushes. Square brushes look like this. This is a synthetic army painter large dry brush um, and as you can see it's got a square head there are lots of different paintbrush heads that could broadly be described as square for the purposes of the miniatures painter but generally speaking anything other than a round head is only going to be used for uh, dry brushing and maybe large surfaces terrain tanks that kind of stuff all other paint heads that we're interested in are round now It's important to emphasize that, no, not that one. 
that one. It's important to emphasize that when I say round, it doesn't mean that the head is circular. So here we've got a square head because the top of the brush is square. In this case, the top of the brush is not square, nor is it round. What we're talking about is this shape here. Just make that clear. So square heads and round, those are the only ones that matter to us. All other shapes, ignore them. They are not for us. They are not miniatures painting brushes. Okay. Moving on then, uh, when we're thinking about predominantly round head brushes, and my review today is going to be of uh, exclusively round head brushes because I do not need any new square brushes, um, we're going to be thinking also about their width and their length. Now, you measure the width of a paintbrush head by measuring its diameter. So from one side of the circle to the other. Uh, and its length, literally the length from the end of the ferrule, which is the metal piece, ferrule is here. So the length is measured from the end of the ferrule to the tip of the brush. Okay. So that's length. Length is the most important feature other than the shape of the, of the head itself. Um, the length is what is going to dictate the level of control you have. And actually, I, I need to slightly rephrase that because there are probably people already shouting at the screen. It's not about length. No, they're right. It's about the length to width ratio. The reason I say it's all about length is the majority of miniatures painting brushes are of a pretty similar width. The width doesn't vary all that much. The length varies a great deal more depending on what you want out of it. But it is the ratio that is important. So the larger the ratio of length, to width, the less control you have, but the longer, more smoother stroke you are able to make. And we'll look at some examples of that when I get to open up my box later. Right, is there anything else that I need to cover? No, there isn't. So hopefully uh, we've got through to the end here and I will cut away for a moment and come back and we will look at the product I'm unboxing today. Right, so the brushes that I have acquired for this video, for the review, is the Rosemary & Co Workbench Warriors Paintbrush Set. Um, now, I specifically ordered this set because it comes with a wide variety of different brushes and I'm really looking to, forward to taking the different uh, types and size and materials of brush and giving them a proper test over the next 6 to 12 months so that I can conclude what's really going to work. But before we have a look at the brushes themselves, let's see what you can expect from Rosemary & Co. Because here is the box. Uh, as you can see, I've cut it open. I've checked that the contents were correct before opening it on video. Um, cardboard box, pre-printed with the Rosemary & Co product labels and then addressed uh, to me on the other side. Uh, sealed with um, paper packing tape, which means that it is fully recyclable. So this content of this box is fully recyclable. There's no plastic to get rid of uh, in the box itself. We open it up and we have a sticker. This is a thing that people seem to do these days, give away stickers. I do have a, a collection of stickers from manufacturers that I keep in my studio, um, so I'll stick this with it, but I'm not quite sure why. Uh, got a little card note. So we've got a note up here, which is nice, nice customer service, just saying thank you. Um, in these days of hustle and bustle and busy lives, we all lead the small common courtesies are all too often overlooked. That's very true. I like the philosophy. Rosemary & Co. has quite a cosy uh, commercial culture to it. Uh, I don't know how much it is. It is a, a true thing, but it feels sincere. And we've got a little card here as well. Um, again, just a piece of waste cardboard that's been printed just to confirm that the contents of the box are fully recyclable, which is great. My uh, shipping note. And then the packing itself. So we'll take that out. Box is all done. Let's throw that away. It's a good box. Somebody will probably get that box from me in due course with some miniatures in it. Uh, let us open up. So we've just got, again, a piece of recyclable cardboard with paper packing tape so that can be recycled. Uh, and that is holding the paintbrush set nicely firmly in place. So let us tear that out. That can go on the recycling. Marvellous. And here is our pack. So obviously the pack itself is plastic, so the pack does not look recyclable. I don't see anything on here to suggest that the pack it can be recycled. It can't. It's fully sealed. This is not a um, not a Ziploc kind of a bag. I'm going to have to cut this open. Grab some scissors. Uh, 
So that can't be recycled, which is a shame. We've got a cardboard inner. Workbench Warriors miniature set. I'm not sure how I feel about the name Workbench Warriors. Um, it's not the workbench that I'm fighting on. It's the tabletop. But there we are. Workbench Warriors miniature set. Rosemary & Co. packaging. All the details of the brushes you get on the back. And I will probably refer to that as I go through the brushes. And then again, we've got two plastic sets inside the pack. More plastic bags. Um, again, are they... No, no, they are fully sealed. So we need those scissors back again to open up. And we'll have a look through. Let's see where are we going to start. Let's start with this pack because they all seem to be quite similar. So the Workbench Warriors set from Rosemary & Co. is specifically designed for tabletop miniatures painting. Um, and I like the fact that they have acknowledged that that is a part of their customer base, a large enough part of their customer base to get their own set, which is really nice. I don't know whether Windsor & Newton has done the same thing. Um, I don't believe they have, but uh, I'm open to correction. So now what I've got here, ah, this is good. Okay, so I have opened up the red dot set. Now the red dot set is significant because this is their premium synthetic range of brushes. Uh, they are round head, uh, the red dot pointed round, and I have got, just checking my notes here, so I've got a 10 0, a 2 0, a 0, a 1, and a 2. So I've got a 10 0, which is tiny. Teeny, in fact, that's red dot. No, they're not all red dot. That's red dot, that's red dot, that's red dot. Those two are actually from a different series. Oh, dropped one. And the top's falling off. So they've all got these plastic tops on, which are very common with brushes in transit. Um, you don't need to keep them. Uh, if you want to use them in your terrain construction, go ahead. They are not actually useful. You won't need them for the brushes unless you're transporting them a lot and you haven't got anything else to put on them. Um, but so actually we've got in here one, two, three red dots in one pack. Now I know there are more red dots in there because I just read them out. There should be five in total. But these other two are series 93 and series 99 pure sable brushes. So we'll look at those in a moment. Right, so we've got the red dot series. As I say, red dot is pure synthetic, uh, not a mixture. The, the brush heads are quite firm. They're not, um, not soft, quite resistant. Uh, they, they've got a little bit of packaging firmness to them. I think wetted up. Yeah, so they're now they're, they're sort of easing up now a bit. I think if I didn't know they were synthetic, at first glance I'd struggle to tell. Um, they don't seem to have a naturally fantastic point. So I've got here, I've got the size 2, the 1, and the 0. So the 2 uh, I would usually use for sort of base coating. Um, 1 would usually be for sort of standard highlighting, shading, that kind of stuff. And the 0 is when I'd be getting onto finer highlights. Uh, not freehand, but but highlighting. So these are these are core brushes to the set. Um, so pointed round red dot is what the range is called, and you know they they look pretty good. Um, I think if I'd just been given these and didn't know anything about them, I wouldn't guess that they were synthetic. But I also wouldn't think straight away that they were Kalinsky Sable or anything like that. Okay, so reasonable brushes. I just accidentally uh, pressed the stop button when I was laying the uh, paintbrushes down. So uh, sorry about that. If we, uh, I'd cut away for a second, so I'll pop the red dot brushes down there, and we will we'll leave the series 93 and 98 for a second because I want to look at the other red dot brushes that should be in this set over here. Let's open up the other pack. So let's have a look. So that is series 42, series 88, series 402. We'll pop those to one side and then have a look at these red dots. So these are the other two red dots, which is the 20 and the 10 0. <clears throat> so the 20 is is a that's your everyday fine detail brush. 
This is if you want to, to paint flag designs, stripes, checks, lines. 2-0 is where you're going for your fine detail. So again, this is a synthetic brush. It's got a little bit of packing stiffness, but it eases up nicely. And yes, I do put paintbrushes in my mouth. I realize that that offends some people, but I always have, and I'm yet to hear a coherent answer not to. Uh, it's got an all right tip. From, from, from first glance, it looks good. We'll see how the paint flows on it uh, over the next few months, and I'll report back. But that uh, that's, yeah, it seems like a good brush. Let's look at the tens era. This is what uh, the, the Masterclass paint set from Armour Painter would call the Psycho, I think. It is indeed extremely tiny. Um, it's not, I don't think it's quite as tiny as the Psycho. Let me just grab the Psycho from my Army Painter set. No, it is indeed, it's quite a lot larger than the Psycho. It's closer, what have we got here? I've got the, uh, the Insane Detail brush. Again, compared to the Army Painter Insane Detail brush, it is a longer tip, so it's got, it's got more length, which implies less control but better flow, uh, which I think for a fine detail brush is a good quality. Um, the, the Insane Detail brush from Army Painter is the brush that's probably in the best condition because I never use it. Uh, it's just not, not a brush that, that ever really sort of appealed to me. Uh, so that 10 zero is pretty nice. Now I am going to put the cover back on the 10 zero because I still have it in hand. Right, now let us turn and look at the other brushes. So red dot, um, it looks fine. Uh, doesn't look like Kalinsky Sable. It doesn't feel like Kalinsky Sable. It doesn't come to a point like Kalinsky Sable. But it, if you told me it was anything else, I would believe you. So let's have a look at what else we've got. So let's start with the Series 93. This is another size 2 brush. So the size 2 is the length of the brush. But in this case, if we compare the size 2 with the size 2 red dot, you guys can't see it very well. No, you can't see it at all. Okay, so in this case, I said it's the length of the brush. I am an idiot. The size 2 is not the length of the brush. The size 2 is the width of the brush and no doubt there are people shouting at the screen for me there. So with the size 2 here we can see that the series 93 is a much shorter brush than the red dot size 2. So it, it's almost half the length and it's the same width and what that means is more control uh, but a shorter flow. You can't load it with as much paint so this is for small detail pieces. So you would use, I mean, it's a size two, so it can load up quite a lot of paint. It comes to a nice tip. Uh, the Series 93 is pure sable. So it's not their highest level of quality. It's not Kalinsky sable, but it is, it is sable. It instantly, I can see that it comes to a finer point than the red dot synthetic brushes, just naturally. Um, doesn't feel like it's got any packing stiffness to it. It's just instantly soft and responsive. You, you can feel the quality of the snap in the sable compared to the synthetic brushes, but it is a much shorter tip, so that also has its effect on the snap. Uh, so, yeah, no, that looks like a nice brush. The Series 93 looks like the kind of brush that you would want to do fine detail for an extended period. So if you are doing things like trying to write letters, um, if you were trying to add detail to scrolling to make it look like it had text on it or, or the surface of, of teeny tiny books, um, this would be a good choice of brush. Okay, that's the Series 93 Pure Sable Size 2. And then we got the Series 99 Size 2. And uh, let's just compare. Series 99 uh, is pointed pure sable so like the the 93 it is pure sable but it's a longer tip so it's still the same width longer tip if we compare it with the red dot it's not as long as the red dot it's kind of halfway in length between the red dot size 2 and the series 93 size 2 um, this is one of these areas where you're probably going to find yourself using either the 93 or the 99 depending on your style 
And my suspicion is that as a painter, what I'm going to do is end up using probably the 99 most. And then when I start wearing out the 99, I'll switch and use the 93. Um, I, I, I would probably have to make a conscious effort to, to decide which one I was going to prioritize at any time. Um, if anybody out there thinks that there's a really strong distinction between a brush that the uh, the 99 brush and the uh, 93 brush, uh, I'm just checking the length. The 99 brush has an 11.1 millimeter length, and the 93 has an 8.1. So it's only it's three millimeters difference between the series 99 and the series 93. Uh, I'm not sure how much, maybe a better painter than me would say that there was a distinction. Right, we've got the last three brushes here. So we've got the 42 and the 88 and the 402. Now I'm going to look at the 88 last because that's an interesting brush. Let's look at the 42. So we've got a 42, another size 2. So the series 42 is squirrel. So rather than sable, this is squirrel. Um, it's a darker bristle instantly. I can feel it's got a little bit of packing stiffness to it. The, the tip feels very resilient. But the brush as a whole flares much more than the sable brush. And if we go back to the 99, if we go back to the 99, we can see that they're the same length, same width, so we've got the 99 and the 42, and the 99 is pure sable, and the 42 is pure squirrel. I've never used a squirrel hairbrush before. I'm, I'm fascinated to find out what it's like compared to sable, and what difference there is between it. Um, so it'll be really interesting to see whether this size 242, the size 299, and size 293 have really got anything between them to really dictate which one I'm going to favour in any given in any given moment. That will be interesting to find out. And last, uh, not last, penultimate brush to look at is the 402. Now the 402 I'm really interested in. The 402 is the designer pointed sable, um, but it's not pure sable. This is a sable blend. So this is sable and synthetic. Um, this is also a size two, but this is a long brush. It's the same size as the red dot, I seem to remember. So the red dot, uh, this is the red, uh, that's interesting. So the red dot is described as being 11 point, oh no, no, I'm right. Sorry, I was misreading the screen. So yeah, so these are both 14.1 millimeters. So the red dot size two and the 402, which is a sable blend, uh, is the same length, same width, different materials. So this is gonna be a fascinating contrast. Sable blend versus pure synthetic. Um, in terms of review, I, I'm really interested to see how these two compare with each other. Last of all then, finally, the final brush uh, I have left till last is the Series 88 Pure Sable Rigger. Now, I don't know how well you can see that on the screen, but that is a 19.5 millimeter tip. So the ferrule is to there, and then the brush tip itself is there. So we've got a long, long brush. Uh, this is only a size one, which means it's narrower than the other brushes, but much, much longer. What this should mean is that this is the brush for painting long, thin lines. So if you want to paint a line on the outside of someone's cape, or put a line down the side of a, of a tank or along the leg of a, of a robot or a dreadnought or something along those lines. You know, this should be the brush to go to. This is Pure Sable. It's their Series 88. I think uh, all the 88 are Pure Sable. I don't know if all the 88 are Pure are Riggers. Um, but this, this is the Rigger brush. So this is another one which I expect to use quite a lot and I'm really interested to see what it's like. I've never used a Rigger. Um, a brush that is this narrow and this long. So it's, it's that um, ratio that I talked about before. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to using this and seeing what it's like and whether I can get those long, thin lines that I, I've been yearning to deliver. 
Uh, so that will be a, an interesting brush. And again, because it's a rigger, I'm going to put the cover back on that one as well to protect it. So obviously I haven't used these brushes yet. They've come straight out of the box. And I will come back and do another review in probably three to six months time to discuss how I have found the experience of using this set. But my first impression is two things. First of all, there are some brushes in here that I'm really looking forward to using that I think are going to really suit my painting style very well. But I don't think this is necessarily the set for the tabletop miniatures painter. I think this is a great set for a reviewer because we've got a mix of materials, we've got a mix of lengths and widths and different series brushes and I'm really looking forward to taking them all for a test drive to see which ones I like best. But do I really need three size two brushes of the same length and the same width because, pardon me, because all size two? So I've got the red dot, I've got the series 93, and I've got the series 99, and they're all the same length, uh, and they are all the same width. Um, so that is, you know, an interesting, in fact, I'm, I'm just going to check the exact details here. So the red dot round size 2 is 11.8 millimetres. No, the red size 1 is 11.8. Size 2, sorry, is... 14.1 okay I'm, I'm mistaking so it's not the, it's not the red dot forgive me uh, it's the 99 which is 11.1 <clears throat> the 42 which is the squirrel which is 11 uh, and okay no I'm I am mistaking I'm perhaps I'm doing them a disservice then see this is this is why we go there even though I looked at them let me get them out again and compare the ones that I'm a little bit perplexed by because I am perplexed but it's not three brushes, it's two brushes. So I'm just trying to do this without stopping the video. Because my laptop is right in front of me and I've just been putting the brushes down on it. Okay, so this is our Series 2 Squirrel. This is our Series 2 Red Dot. Which is a size 1. Okay, so that's the Squirrel's a size 2. The Red Dot is a size 1. And then we've got this one, which is the Series... 99 which is the size 2 so I think I can I can accept having a size 1 and a size 2 that makes sense but we've got two size 2 the 99 and the 42 one is squirrel one is pure sable it'll, it'll be fascinating to come back in three months and find out if I've got different uses for these two brushes I don't know I don't know I, I, I'll be fascinated then we've got the series 402 which is the Sable Blend, and the Red Dot, which is pure synthetic. And that those are both size 2, and they've got the longer tips. So, again, is there going to be a, a real distinction between the 402 and the Red Dot that are the same width, same length? Will I actually have different functions for these two brushes? Uh, we'll wait and see. And then last of all, I suppose I should talk about the Series 93 size 2, which is the shorter head. Now, in principle, I should have different uses for this compared to the longer Series 99. I'm just struggling a little bit to imagine what they're going to be. Um, I will do my very best to work out if there is a function for which this is more suited than the Series 92 uh, or the 402. Um, I can't I can't think of one, but it'll be interesting to find out. These ones, however, the rest of the red dot size look great. Uh, the rigger and the teeny tiny red dots uh, uh, have an obvious role to play. So my big question is whether actually the hobby painter, the workbench warrior of the of the title, needs that particular selection of brushes. Um, I'm assuming that they have asked experts, that they've actually consulted with high-end painters who use their brushes and they've got answers that make sense. Um, we'll see whether my experience over the next three to six months holds that out um, or whether I would be suggesting that they include something else in the set. Uh, that's it, really. 
Um, that's a sort of a, a look through what's in the set, what I imagine I'm going to get out of it, and we'll come back in three to six months and have a look at the conclusions. So thanks very much for watching this extra Precinct Omega Reviews video. Um, while you are here, can I please uh, invite you to like and subscribe to this video because that's what YouTube videos do. And also have a look in the notes. I am currently running or about to launch a Kickstarter for some Precinct Omega miniatures. Um, I would really welcome your interest and if you like this video and you like what you see enough, then do please consider supporting the Patreon because that is how I make these things pay. Thank you very much. I will not keep you a second longer. Speak to you again soon. Bye. If you enjoyed this content, please consider supporting Precinct Omega via Patreon for behind the scenes, early access and exclusive extra videos and blogs. Or help keep the show on the road and get great new games from Precinct Omega at Wargamebox.